We devote enormous resources to that, and it is right and appropriate for us to be vigilant and aggressive in trying to deal with that. The same way that a big city mayor's got to cut the crime rate down uh, if he wants that city to thrive. <clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen. The president comparing fighting terrorism to a mayor, big city mayor, fighting crime, which just proves uh, he doesn't get it or he gets it, but uh, he does it his own way. Joining us is Michael Rubin, resident scholar at the American Enterprise Institute and senior lecturer at the Naval Postgraduate School Center for Civil Military Relations. And Michael, you wrote a great piece at, uh, at the American Enterprise, uh, AEI.org. Um, the strategy to defeat terrorism should be the defeat of Islamists, not choosing sectarian sides. But this guy can't even get it right that terrorism and robbing a bank are two different things. Well, let me put it this way, Steve. Let's say for a second that terrorism is like crime. At least big city mayors are willing to define what crime is. <laughs> I've been reading through President Obama's strategies for counterterrorism, uh, strategies for counterextremism, and he refuses to define what terrorism is, or for that matter, what extremism is. No, that's, a, that's, that's an excellent point. And of course, if you've been listening to Susan Rice last week and Obama the past few days, uh, were more concerned with uh, climate change and uh, the LGBT community uh, than we are with going after the threat of terror. Well, that's absolutely true. If the LG, um, if the lesbian, gay, and transgender community would start putting bombs on buses, maybe Obama would start taking terrorism seriously. Unfortunately, that's not the case. All right, let's talk about, uh, of course, uh, Kayla Mueller, confirmation today that she is, in fact, dead. Um, what do you think ISIS is doing here? Um, you know, they didn't make a video of her death. They, of course, they're claiming she was killed in that bombing raid, but um, they didn't, you know, as far as we know, there were ransom demands, but that was last August. She must have been dead for quite some time. Uh, we haven't seen, uh, you know, even the pilot was killed in early January and they released the video in February. What, what's going on with them? Well, you know, first of all, when it comes to the pilot being killed, it looks like what the Islamic State was trying to do was a double humiliation. On one hand, uh, arrange a hostage trade for this wanted al-Qaeda terrorist, uh, imprisoned terrorist, Sajida, who was found guilty of uh, participation in a bomb bombing of um, Amman hotels back in 2005. As soon as the Islamic State had received her, they were going to say, ha-ha, we killed the pilot anyway. Well, they're doing that. Thank God the Jordanians didn't negotiate the way some European countries have uh, for ransom and so forth. But on the other hand, they're strategically releasing word of the hostage's death in order to avoid um, or to distract. You know, the Islamic State has suffered some military setbacks recently, losing the Kurdish town of Kobana in Syria after a six-month siege. And also they're on the defense of in and around Mosul, the second largest city in Iraq. By, but now no one's talking about that. They're only talking about the deaths of these hostages. And remember, the videos aren't just about uh, showing violent death. They're right. about recruitment, and that's what they're doing. I, I'm glad you brought up the video, because according to one translator who was on one of the shows over the weekend, she said she stayed up for hours translating. And that video of the burning pilot not only had video of the burning pilot, it had propaganda. Among the propaganda, anti-Israel, anti-Jew, grievances against Muslims, and they brought up the Crusades. Now, Obama had to know this. He had to have been briefed as to what was on that tape. And then he went out days later and brought up the Crusades. Well, you know, Obama probably wasn't that good of a student back in his Indonesian madrasa because when it comes to the Crusades, the biggest irony of this is while Islamists and terrorists might talk about this today because they know we in the West self-flagellate, when you actually look at Islamic history, people didn't really talk about the Crusades. They didn't identify the Crusades as a major event the way that Christians did, simply because contemporaneous with the Crusades was the rise of the Mongols who posed a much greater military threat, not to the periphery, which was Palestine at the time, but rather to the heart of the Islamic world. And remember, it was the Mongols that built pyramids out of human skulls in Baghdad, the Islamic empire's capital at the time. Uh, briefly, uh, Netanyahu, it appears I was afraid he might not come in the end. Now he's tweeting out, looking for support, says he's going to come. Uh, now I, I'd like to feel confident that he will be here. Well, you know, he's going to be here for the APAC conference anyway. I personally would like to see him uh, postpone the congressional hearing and come back after his elections 
simply because that would take any excuse away from President Obama not to meet with him. Now, Netanyahu is right that you can't compromise on an existential threat, but I think that tactically he made a mistake because he knows American politics. Israeli ambassador to the United States, Ron Dermer, knows American politics, and they walked into this trap of hostility, which President Obama set for them. All right, interesting position. Uh, we appreciate it as always, and we'll speak to you soon, sir. Thank you. All right, folks, when we come back, if you don't know the name Martin Pistorius, boy, you're going to know it after this interview, a very special interview with a very special man who has an incredible story. Uh, I spoke with him a few days back, but you got to see this interview. Don't miss it.